This is a love story about two distinguished artists, Marjorie Dangerfield, the daughter of renowned American painter Elliot Dangerfield, and Louis Lundin. Their artwork, as you'll see, couldn't be more different, but they shared a love of the arts, the outdoors, horses, and had a deep connection to Blowing Rock. Marjorie was born in 1900 in New York City and lived in New York City with her father Elliot, her mother Anna Granger, and her sister Gwendolyn. But they spent every summer here in Blowing Rock. As a kindergartner, her talent in sculpture was already unfolding. She was fascinated with it and made figures, figures out of colored clay. And at 12, her father, who always encouraged her as an artist throughout her life, was excited to see one of her figures and cast it in bronze. And we're going to see this amazing work from a 12-year-old child. Her work can be found in churches and museums across the country, including a very large outdoor sculpture called The Offering at St. Mary of the Hills Episcopal Church, right across the, the street from Brom. Her book, The Fun and Fundamentals of Sculpture, was dedicated to Louis. Louis Lundin was born in 1896. When Marjorie married Louis, she told her family, I finally met myself, a real man. And Louis enjoyed perpetuating this mystique about himself as the rugged Western cowboy. In fact, he entertained his nephews, Joe and Elliot Delaney, with the tale that he had been orphaned at age 14 and had been raised by Indians, he called them, in Wyoming. His upbringing, though, was much more prosaic. He was born in Council Bluffs, Iowa. His father died when he was a young boy. His mother raised him. He had a middle-class upbringing, but he had two passions. He was born crazy to draw and was devoted to horses. In Council Bluffs, he spent a lot of time with Native Americans, watching them ride their horses. He drew the, those horses. And by the time he reached high school, he was recognized for his artistic talent. After serving in World War I, Louis attended the University of Missouri where he studied journalism and took a few art classes. However, he left college early and by, the, by his mid-twenties had moved to New York. How he got to New York is a story by itself and one that Louis may have had a hand in embellishing. Apparently, a group of New York newspaper editors went out west to publicize the rodeo and who should meet them but a young man expertly driving a six-horse team and coach. The young man would illustrate what they would be seeing on the tour by these quick, brilliant sketches of rodeo hands and horses and cowboys. And Walter Turnbull, a famous editor of his day, was so impressed by the vigor of these drawings that he said to Landine, come east. Crawl off those snorty bronx before you get pitched off. Why do you want to be a rodeo hand when you have talent? Study art. So, Lundin arrived in New York City to enroll in art school and stumbled into one of the greatest artists of his day, George Looks, a member of the Ashcan School, also known as the School of Eight. Lux invited him to work for him and said that if he did, he'd make an artist out of him. Lux became his guide, mentor, and friend, and Louis became a member of the Art Student League. Marjorie and Louis were very fond of their nephews, Joe Delaney and his brother Elliot, and here you see them pictured on horseback, and Louis had painted this painting to commemorate a horseback ride in the mountains of the Blue Ridge, something they all love to do. Louis and Marjorie first met at a gallery opening in New York City. By then, they had fully launched their professional careers. Louis was a writer and illustrator for publications such as the Saturday Evening Post and Fortune Magazine, and Marjorie was a standout sculptor and arts educator. 
They married in 1945. During their honeymoon, Marjorie wrote to her sister, I didn't know I could be so happy. And Louis says he feels like he has been born again into another life and had not lived before. They were devoted to each other. When work travel kept them apart, Louis wrote Marjorie little illustrated letters. In the Brahm archives, there are 55 of them. Each contains a charming illustration that Louis did, and his notes are humorous, poetic, and poignant. One summer he wrote, Baby, it doesn't seem like seven years of happiness. I've just been counting them one by one, and they grow more precious. Ever the adventurers, Marjorie and Louis honeymooned in Arizona, and while traveling through the Blue Canyon, where the remotest Navajos live, they came across this man, Hostin Nez Juanica. It took some convincing through an interpreter to get him to pose, as the Navajo expressed concerns about having their spirit captured in a, in a sculpture. However, he eventually gave them permission to render his portrait. They were next to a riverbed, and the Navajo helped Marjorie dig into the untreated clay in the riverbed full of pebbles, other dirt, and with her fingers and a nail file, she modeled this exceptional face in front of the Navajo right there at the Blue Canyon. And as you can see, she captured all of his character right then. Typically, she made all of her works in clay, and then they would have a plaster cast put over them, and this is a plaster cast. Eventually, most of her works were cast in bronze. Louis was with her, and he too captured the image of this man in, his, in this painting. Louis had an uncanny ability to capture the essence of American horses in their different locales, rodeo broncos, farm horses, race horses, polo horses, fox hunting horses. What makes Lundin's work unique is his passion for the American West and for his native land. There is no European influence in Louis Lundin's art. He's strictly an American artist painting and drawing the land he loved. Louis felt passionate about preserving the great outdoors. He once said of the petrified forest of Arizona, which was threatened by loggers in 1947, that the land must be preserved, or we will have allowed one of the greatest wonders of the world to vanish through the stupidity of economy. Louis' assignments for magazines and newspapers took him all over the country. He made a living writing about sporting events, which were accompanied by lightning-fast illustrations. He once spent six months in a tempestuous, tossed fishing boat outside Gloucester, Mass, and went into the coal mines of Pennsylvania to report on and portray the miners, as you can see he did here. Louis upheld his identity as an American cowboy for the rest of his life. It was an excellent marketing tool when it came to promoting his drawings and paintings of horses and outdoor life. Here you see a commissioned work of the King Ranch in Texas. He even came to know the performer, Will Rogers, and painted this portrait of him on horseback. This beautiful sculpture is the piece that Marjorie Dangerfield completed when she was 12 years old, and it is remarkable. Marjorie won a national competition to design the sculptural emblem for the Girl Scouts of America, and you will notice how she captures their youth and energy.
This is Louis's drawing of being pitched off from a bucking bronco in a rodeo, and of course Louis on the ground, and the horse, appropriately named, is arthritis. This is Marjorie's more abstract sculpture, but her understanding of the figure still reads through, and it is called flame. Here is a commissioned bas-relief piece where you lightly carve into the clay and it makes a lot of sense because it was more affordable, it was a smaller work, easier to do, and much easier to hang. It looks like a fish, but she could hang it either way. This is a commissioned work of St. Francis, many of Marjorie's commissions were for religious figures just like this. Marjorie won acclaim by portraying many famous people on the stage and of opera. And here we see her creating a sculpture of Martha Graham, one of the greatest modern dancers of her time. See how Marjorie captures the very modern movement of her hands and the energy of the figure. Marjorie and Louis loved horses. Every summer of their married life, they stayed at Westglow, the Dangerfield family home. They were actively involved in the Blowing Rock Horse Show and the Blowing Rock Art Association. It's fun to think of these two colorful personalities enjoying life in Blowing Rock, riding horses in the mountain, and creating art, as many of us still do today. They were supportive of one another through their hardships and their successes. Louis expressed pride in Marjorie's artistic accomplishments and Marjorie encouraged and cared for Louis as he struggled with rheumatoid arthritis. This is a portrait of Marjorie that Louis painted of her and it's really how he remembered her. Marjorie suffered a tremendous loss when Louis died at the age of 65 from pneumonia at the Blowing Rock Hospital, one day after their 15th anniversary. By the time Marjorie died, she had been married and widowed three times, but she chose to be married alongside Louis in the Dangerfield plot where her parents and her grandparents were buried. Echoing the words Louis wrote to her years before, My dear, you mean so much to me, and I only hope my love and your love will always go hand in hand forever. <laughs>